Hey everybody, it's Eddie Joe on Crypto for GrowMyBag.tv. I hope you're having a good one. There's a lot of news to plow through. So if you notice, there's a little bit of a dip going on with regard to the Cryptoverse. Yeah, I'm probably going to go on a buying spree in a little while. Um, and the reason why is just because you had um, Fed, Fed, not the Fed chairs, but Fed vice chair come out. Uh, what's this guy's name? Cash Curry or something like that. He's always negative. No big deal. It's, it's to be expected. But I don't. I really don't think that's the reason why. I really don't. Somebody. Some other people think that that could be the reason why. I don't think so. I think the reason why is simply because people people were profit taking. It's a little bit of profit taking in my in my humble opinion because we didn't move much. Right. It didn't move much. But let's get into news because it's pretty interesting. The crypto industry has a super PAC, at least one, and it raised one hundred two million dollars for U.S. elections. They want to ensure that we get the right people that are crypto friendly into the White House or not into the White House. But yeah. Into the White House and possibly also, you know, just in Congress. So that's going to be a very big deal. We want to know who's actually acting correctly. And so we need to find out how that is, and you need money to do that. So if you want to influence people, I mean, if you think about this, smells like, looks like, no, it doesn't. Um, Sam Bankman-Fried spent a lot of time on Capitol Hill trying to do the same thing, um, trying to work with people that were actually going to, you know, be favorable toward crypto. So having a super PAC is a good idea as long as they go about it, you know, properly, right? Um, my issue is going to be that I don't want those politicians to feel like it's another FTX moment, which is why I'm happy that it's a super PAC. Um, SEC Chairman Gensler, did you did you hear him whining yesterday? He's been whining a bit. You know what? You want to know what he's whining about? Oh, so many people are asking me about crypto. I wish all these journalists would stop asking me about crypto. Are you kidding me, bro? With the fervor that you're going after crypto with, I don't understand why you can't put on your big boy pants and answer the questions. Are the questions hitting too close to home and that you know people are not understanding why you're going so heavy and hard after crypto? Why it seems like your focus is going after crypto? Why it seems like your life revolves around crypto? It's not the journalists that are asking you questions because there aren't questions to be asked. You're creating an environment where you're going after crypto day in, day out. You're going after Ripple. The Chairman Gensler is going after Ripple's stable coin. They're just talking about doing the stable coin. They haven't even come out with it yet. And he's already attacking it in court papers. Dude. And then you have the audacity to whine about why journalists are asking you question, questions around crypto. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. And it keeps pointing back at the same at the same numbers, right? Oh, well, you know, the bulk of crypto is, you know, is fake, you know, is bulk of crypto is securities and the bulk of crypto, you know, have nefarious reasons. Have you looked at the U.S. dollar? The amount of nefarious, you know, operations or any transactions or anything like that happens with fiat, not with crypto. But he's still aiming toward crypto. I keep saying I think he's just doing the doing the work of certain politicians that are currently in office. Maybe they need to not, not be in office anymore. I'm just I'm just wondering. Because it seems to be coming from people that don't understand how crypto works and what kind of help you can give to the industry so that when the United States can remain innovative in that space. That's my fear. My fear is that these people are going to go after crypto so heavy and so hard. That you're just going to just escort companies out of the country and take that innovation with them. I mean, think about this. You're already seeing, you know, exchanges, you know, centralized exchanges say, you know what? We're tied to the United States. We're pulling out. You want to come after us? You can't come after us. We'll just pull out. And that's going to create a situation where you're going to have people find other ways to be involved in crypto. Our country is so messed up when it comes to crypto, you have to go state by state to see what you can and cannot buy. If you live in New York, live in Texas, live in other states, there are certain cryptos you cannot buy. I don't know that there's a single state in the union where you can buy any crypto that you want to buy. I don't know that that exists. And why shouldn't it? Right? I can buy any stock that I want. Why can't I buy any crypto that I want? 
Just wondering, asking for a friend. So if you're going to whine and you're going to cry because you can't deal with all the questions that are coming at you because of all of the moves that you're making, then resign. Clearly, you can't handle the job. Get out. Give it to somebody who actually can handle the job. And I don't mean somebody that's freaking 80 million years old. I mean somebody that actually understands the financial markets, understands how they work, how they operate. Now, I'm not saying that Gary Gensler is a stupid guy. He's not. He's a very, very, very smart person. But my respect for the guy went out the window when he was vying for you know a job in crypto, didn't get it, and then all of a sudden did a 180 against crypto. I don't know. I don't know. Back then, you know, Bitcoin, this crypto, that blockchain, this blockchain, that. I mean, come on. So, yeah, no, I, I, I'm I, not going to trust anything this guy has to say. I'm not going to trust that this guy is operating in a fashion that is for the best interest of the United States, you know, consumers. Because I, I, you're going after crypto for what reason? Instead of saying, hey. We noticed as a whole, the industry seems to be doing blah, blah, blah. And we'd like to sit down with you and understand why you're doing blah, blah, blah. Instead, what they're doing is they're picking off different companies one by one. One by one going after those companies. Send you a Wells notice. We don't care what it is that, you know, we're not telling you why we're going after you. You've got to sit there and guess. Like what? I don't understand. We have oversight of the financial industry, of the banking industry. We have oversight for that. You could create the same kind of situation for crypto. You really can. Hey, Stitchy, come here. He wanted to be on camera. He's a little show off. Um, so I have, a, I have a problem with Chairman Gensler whining about him getting questioned about his actions in the space. I really do have an issue with that. Then you have Wintermute. This is a smart move. Wintermute, London-based, partners with OSL Digital Securities and Hashkey to create a liquidity pool for all of the Bitcoin and Ethereum spot ETFs. I want you to play that back in your head. I said Bitcoin, Hong Kong-based, Ethereum, and Bitcoin spot ETFs. Let that wash over you for a minute. Because if I'm Chairman Gensler, I'm embarrassing the United States. I... I don't know what other way to say it, because Hong Kong has introduced Ethereum spot ETFs. And they did it quickly. You have other countries saying, we're going to do it by the end of 2024. We're going to do it by the end of 2025. Not saying that we're not looking at it. We're not doing this. We're not doing that. They're saying we don't necessarily have the right laws in place, the right regulations in place at the moment. So we're not necessarily going to approve them right now. Oh, and so we want to look at everything and make sure that all the things line up properly before we say yes. But a yes is coming. Not kicking the can down the road, putting a deadline on things and sticking to those deadlines. I don't know. I don't know. Just saying. FTX says that they're going to wind up paying everybody back, paying back their creditors. I think the people that were still on the platform till the end, um, 118% of what they had compared to where they were, you know, using the baseline of where they were. Not bad. That's actually not bad. But that doesn't mean everybody's going to get paid back 118%. So if you're involved in that, I advise you to reach out and find out, reach out to them and find out what that story is going to be. What else is going on? You have the SEC. I told you SEC is targeting Ripple's unregistered stablecoin. Hasn't been released yet. Hasn't been released yet. And I would think that, you know, instead of going after them, you would say, listen, we know you're going to do this stablecoin. You've been talking about it. Here are the things you have to do to do the stablecoin so that it's, you know, a proper thing with us. That shouldn't be a problem. But I think it will be. I think it will be. They mentioned it in court papers. That's a major problem. That's a major problem. Bitpanda is, a, is, is expanding into Austria. That's amazing. They're getting, I hope I don't kill this bank's name. I think it's pronounced Raiffeisen, Raiffeisen Bank. Um, and they're partnering with that bank and then expanding their services to that bank's 55 branches. 
Wow. Remember what I told you about adoption? I'm not just looking at institutional adoption. I'm not just looking at retail adoption. I'm looking at adoption in general and what kind of adoption is happening. What they're saying is, is that we're going to put this in the hands of retail customers right there on the spot, right where they bank. Boom. That's a big deal. That's a bigger deal than what most people think. It really is. He's upset because my daughter's going to work. Um, so I want to pay attention to everything that goes on in that space because as you get more adoption and more use cases, that's what's going to drive crypto onward and upward. That's what's going to do it. Something else I'm paying attention to in the news is Vitalik Buterin is introducing EIP 7702, which is a quantum resistant update to enhance Ethereum security against emerging threats. Quantum computing is an emerging threat for crypto. So that is actually going to be a very big deal. So I want to pay attention to that. And the reason why is because, well, quantum computing, fast computing, it's ridiculously fast. So that could actually crack crack certain things with regard to crypto security. So it is something they need to pay attention to. So, yeah, I'm one. And I sit back and I just wonder. So, uh, yeah. Um, security. Is it a security? Was it a security? I think there's a major problem going on with with the SEC going after Ethereum itself and saying Ethereum is a security. Show me how. You know, the Howey test used to work, but I think with so many different financial vehicles, I think the Howey test needs to be revised. I really do think it needs to be revised because it. I don't know that it applies to crypto the way it applies to other things. And frankly, I don't know if it applies to certain aspects of the traditional financial industry. Back in the day, I think it did. For a long time, I think it did. But we're talking, what, 70, 89 years ago is when it was born, I believe. I don't know. So something that old, I think it was 1935, something like that. So something that old being applied right now, I, I think we can review that and be okay with a review. I really can. It's a little, it's a little, it's a little sketchy how they're using the Howie, the Howie, uh, the Howie test to say that it's it's a uh, security now, given the level of decentralization and everything else that's going on in the space. Um, Gary Gensler is still on his pipe on his pipe dream, saying that you know most of the stuff out there are securities. That could be possible, but there are certain things that are not, and I think it's high time that he actually pony up to the table and say the truth. Anyway, you know what we should do. That's right. We should get into the new, we should get into the numbers. And yeah, we have a lot of things that were going down yesterday and still this morning. Let me update this. I haven't updated it in the past like 15 minutes. There you go. So remember, Black Phoenix was down 100% the other day. So I don't even know what that is. I just, I'm still amazed. So yeah, that's not something I'm touching. But let's look at everybody else that I would be interested in. Jupiter is down. Jupiter is the number one um, DEX out there based on Solana. Um, Radium is another one. It's down 8%. They're both down 8%. Book of Meme is down 9%. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, it's down 8%. Sele Singularity and Ocean Protocol, both down 10%. I saw Fetch AI on this list. Did they drop? Or maybe I'm just blind. There it is. Fetch AI is down nine percent. So looking at those three those three projects that are supposed to merge in some way and then come out with ASI, that's that's interesting because it's down ten. They're down each down ten percent. You could buy any one of them. I think you could buy any one of them, and in a day or so they'll pop back up. That's that's what I'm looking at. So later on today, I will be looking at you know my holdings and trying to see what I'm going to buy. I will be looking at Jupiter. I will be looking at Radium, mostly Jupiter. Um, I'll be looking at Book of Meme. I'll be looking at Fetch, Helium, Singularity, um, Ocean. Don't know if I'll be looking at Injective. I might take a peek. Um, Dog with Hat is another one I'll probably take a look at. Just saying, those are things that I'm that I'm paying attention to, and as you can imagine. There's about nothing on this side that matters that's actually moving. Uh, let's see if there's anything on this list that's going to make me jump. Nope, 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 nope. All righty. Then what do we have? We have Bitcoin 
with operating well within my blue band. My blue band goes from 57, 686 to 63, 714, and we're currently trading at 62, 169. So if I'm looking at this, I'm still saying there's a huge amount of up, upward momentum, right? Or potential. I think right now we're just moving laterally. Like I said, I think we're going to move up to a level, go lateral, move up to a level, go, move up to a level, go lateral. And that's, you know, that's basically stair stepping. I think that's going to happen for a little bit until a catalyst happens or another catalyst happens and we just shoot up. And on that on that rise, I'll probably be shaving off a lot of profit. Um, if not profit, I'll be taking out my principal because I want to get to my principal as, as quickly as possible. Right. So whatever money I put in, that's my principal. Whatever I make on top of that is my profit. Or, you know, if I lose something, that's my loss. But I'm going to be shaving off as much as I can so that I can get back to my principal and then keep using other people's money to make money and then take my principal and then whether or not I want to get back into crypto or if I want to get into another business. So that's pretty much what I'll be doing. Then when you look at DeFi Llama, we're down about $7 billion, down to 111. And the Crypto Fear and, De Fear and Greed Index dropped four from 68 to 64. I think it's going to go back up. I think people are a little bit panicked. Here's what I really think. What I really think is that people get into crypto when they think they can make money. So they hear, oh, crypto's up, crypto's up. Oh, let me, let me go hop into this crypto thing and see if I can make a quick 5 to 10%. And then they realize that they're not because there's a little bit of bad news. And then they pull out at that loss. Not smart. Not smart. I think there are a lot of people diving into crypto that just don't have the background, the foundational knowledge about crypto. And I think that once they get that foundational knowledge, they'll be more solid and secure in their crypto transactions. Just saying. Buy the book. It's 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 well worth it. It's well worth it just to get the a, a baseline understanding of how crypto works, where it came from, why it exists. And that'll start to have you understand why there are so many projects out there being built and not just that there are so many projects, but that so many projects are being financed. They're getting investors. That's why I tell people to get that understanding. Anyway, this is Eddie J on Crypto for Goldman Bag TV. I hope you're having a good one. I hope this is helpful to you. If it is, drop me a note. Let me know if I'm if I'm missing something. Um, I do owe somebody an apology, Spend Cookie. I do apologize to you. I will get to io.net, but I want you to. T I still want you to give me a little bit more information about it. Io.net. I know nothing about it. Give me some kind of foundation of what you're thinking, because you, I think you said that it was an, a year. Earlier this year, somebody mentioned it. I don't think it was me because I don't I don't know it, um, but I'll look into it if that's what you want. Um, let me know. All right. If you, if you think you have critiques that will help me get better, that would be appreciated, too. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm far from it. So any kind of help in that area is greatly appreciated. Have a good one, everybody. Bye bye.